In this next exercise, you will lay out the song structure and populate the drummer track with drummer regions for the whole song. So using the arrangement track, you will now create arrangement markers for all of the selections of your song. You'll adjust their length positions and order and fill in all the new sections with drummer regions. So what we first need to do at the top of the track header, go to uh, global tracks. So that's G on the keyboard. Or if I go to tracks, global tracks, show global tracks, we get this window here. So let me just clean up my desktop a little bit so you can see. So here's my global tracks, so that's G on the keyboard. And just looking at this top one here, you should have a, an arrangement track right at the top. Now I'm going to get rid of my drum parts. I'm going to take it back to a sort of a blank setting. So with the uh, arrangement tracks, we can actually turn these on and off. If we control click anywhere in global tracks, we can turn things on and off as we see fit. So let's leave those on. And here in the arrangement track, let's just make that a little bit bigger. So the arrangement track has a little add marker here. And if I click that uh, marker, what it'll do is it will create an, uh, an eight bar measure, if you like, which is called intro. And that creates that at bar one. You can't move it, it will create it at bar one. So by default, arrangement markers are eight bars long and they are placed one after the other, starting from the beginning of the, sorry, starting from the end of the last arrangement marker. So you can't have a gap in between. So if I want to rename that intro, I can click here. I can choose a name or create my own name. And if I wanted to ch change the length, I can just pick it up at the bottom and make it longer or shorter. And we can see the length is displayed there in the help tag. So that is indeed four bars long. Now, if I go back here, here and I click the plus sign, I'll now get, again, an eight bar selection straight after the last arrangement marker. So there's no gap in between. And I can, again, resize that accordingly. And now let's add a chorus as well. So it kind of guesses what, what the next bit is going to be, but of course you can rename it depending on your song. And you can keep going. So if you've already got the arrangement of the song, you can use this arrangement marker to, uh, as, a, as a visual guide when you're recording, uh, so that you can see where the changes are going to be, which is really very helpful. But also when it comes to creating drummer parts, if you start off with the arrangement track and then you add drummer parts, what happens is it, if you like, analyzes these names and comes up with what it thinks is an appropriate drummer part. So if I go to and press and hold control, so I'm pressing hold control and on the drummer track, if I go to populate with drummer regions, that will now populate my arrangement with what it thinks sh should correspond with each of these parts. We can change the length of arrangement markers at this point, but the drums won't update with it. If I wanted now to update the drums, I delete them, press and hold, control, populate, and that will update and correspond to this up here. And don't forget down the bottom here, you have the resize function. And at the top here, you have your loop function.
When recording a live drummer in a studio, the engineer often positions microphones on each drum. This allows control over the recorded sound of each drum, so the engineer can individually equalize or compress the sound of each kit piece. The producer or engineer may also want the drummer to try different kicks or snares or to experiment with hitting the top of cymbals. When recording a live drummer in a studio, the engineer often positions microphones on each drum. This allows control over the recorded sound of each drum, so the engineer or producer can individually equalize or compress the sound of each kit piece. In Logic, when using Drummer, the sounds of each drum are already recorded. However, you can still use several tools to customize the drum kit and adjust the sound of each drum. Smart controls are a set of knobs and switches that are pre-mapped to the most important parameters of the plugins on the channel strip of the selected track. So now we're going to have a look at smart controls and smart controls are here, this function here. So you can use this function to turn smart controls on and off or you can press B on the keyboard. When you press B, the Smart Control pane opens at the bottom of the main window, replacing the Drummer Editor. The Smart Controls are divided into three sections, Mix, Compression and Effects. So in the Mix section, six knobs allow you to balance the levels of each of the drums. To the right of each knob is a button that lets you mute or turn on each of the drums, the corresponding drum. So if we just create a, a loop, and I can do that by clicking and holding the arrangement and dragging it up. Let's turn some bits off. Try a bit with some snare on. And of course we can adjust the volume of each individual element as well. In the effects section you'll see a tone control. So as you drag the, the knob up and down, the drum sound change timbre and become brighter. At the top of the the top left channel strip in the inspector you'll see the EQ curve change in the uh, channel strips EQ display reflecting changes made to the channel EQ. So let's open up the channel EQ and move this tone control, play it. And the compression section here works on a similar principle to this effects section. So let's open the compressor and let's move the compressor knob up and down as we play. Drum Kit Designer is a software instrument plugin that plays drum samples triggered by the drummer. It allows you to customize the drum kit by choosing from a collection of drums and cymbals and tuning and dampening them. So I'm going to close down my compressor and in the inspector window here, just click drum kit. Click the snare and you can hear the snare sample being triggered and the snare stays lit and the rest of the drum kit is in shadow. To the left, a snare panel containing different snares or a different choice of uh, three snares appears and to the right an edit panel uh, appears including three setting knobs. So the left panel shows only a limited selection of snares. To gain access to the entire collection of drum samples included with Logic Pro X you need to choose a producer kit from the library. 
In the control bar, click the library button here or press Y. And to the left of the inspector, the library opens listing all the patches for the selected track. So here we have East Bay, as that's the patch that's currently selected. But if we scroll, scroll down to the bottom, we'll see producer kits. So click that and now look for East Bay Plus, which is this one here and select that. The plugin window now displays a channel EQ plugin. So let's reopen the drum kit designer. So we'll close the channel EQ plugin and at the top of the library here, move the pointer over the drum kit icon and click the sliders symbol that appears as you hover over and the drum designer plugin window opens. So the East Bay Plus kit sounds the same as East Bay but allows a wider range of options when it comes to customizing the kit. So now if we click the snare function you'll see on the left hand side some additional snares and on the right hand side some additional functions down here. As we hover over a snare, if we just go to the eye for information, we'll see a, ah, sorry, we have to click. We'll see a detailed description of the each of the snares. And also we can trigger each of them as well. Like so. And we can change these on the fly as the kit's playing. So I'll turn the volume down a little bit. And if I now click the kick drum, kick drums appear and I can do the same thing. If I wanted to dampen, tune or change the gain of the kick drum, I can do so here. We can also work with electronic drum kits as well in Logic. So if we now go to the back to the library and click the padlock just to open that and I'm going to make that a little bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. And now in the drummer section we're going to choose hip hop and we're going to choose Morris Boom Bap and change the drummer and let's have a let's choose a region let's have a listen so you can hear that Morris plays a very loose swing hip hop groove and the project tempo has changed to 135 although it sounds like he's playing half that so maybe adjust the tempo to 168. In the inspector, the drum kit designer has been replaced with a drum machine designer, which has been inserted at the top of the drummer channel strip. It looks a little bit different. It looks like this. And we'll come back to that in a minute, but you can see there's shakers and rides and hi-hats and kicks and all sorts of things going on. And as I play it, you can see each of the regions being triggered. You'll also notice some changes being made to the drum editor. You'll see that the beat presets and the puck pad remain the same, but over here the drum kit has been replaced and we now have percussion, 
shakers and hi-hats and kick snare and claps and if we go to the details function we'll see a new set of functions here which we can experiment with and if we go to humanize the best way to demonstrate that it's like a feel function so if I just put my song position pointer right on the bar and zoom in if I move this humanize function you'll see what happens so as I move it to zero it's on the beat if I want it to play a little bit later I can move move the humanize feel to give it um, a more of a laid-back feel we have also got a swing function which moves certain elements can you see that bit moving as I'm changing the setting here let's move the swing now so we can make it more or less tight depending on what we're after when we're working with drum machines quite often we want to see each element laid out on a piano roll or a drum roll so that we can move individual MIDI elements uh, on on a piano roll when we work with drum machines quite often we want to see each element laid out on a piano roll or a drum roll we can easily do that in logic by selecting a region so let's say take this region here and if I control click I'll get this function here convert convert to MIDI region and that then changes that into a more recognizable uh, layout for those that like to work with MIDI you'll see in the piano roll notes are represented by beams on a grid the beams are positioned across a vertical piano roll that shows the MIDI note pitches and you can see each of the elements being triggered so if we look at our go back to our drum machine designer we'll see that there's a lot of samples loaded but only so many being triggered and of course if we wanted to trigger other ones we'll see the names corresponding along here to each of these samples and we can with the pencil tool which is my command click tool so I hit command and I get a pencil tool I can start to draw in additional notes so now in my drum machine designer let's choose this kick let's just solo it we can of course mute it but when we select it and we go to our library we'll see that in our library it shows us a list of all the kick drums available to us so if I select and play I can change kick drums and also with the kick selected the smart controls for that pane open here if I then click on snare that then loads up my snare library and I can do a similar thing here if I just go up to that image there and click that just resets there we go that resets now so that gives me my smart controls for the channel strip as I showed you earlier